Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Donate as little as a dollar an episode to get your name in the show and access WMS Gold content. Check out our page at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show or click the link on our site. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Okay, so Siri is telling us that we need to turn left in 800 feet despite the fact we're actually sitting in a parking lot. Yes. But we've made it to Ohio. Wonders will never cease. Best part about Ohio? Alcoholic gas stations. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Sorgatron here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ready to talk professional wrestling at an amateur level. I'm talking about the podcasting's at an amateur level. The wrestling is still professional. Uh, and with me, of course, also to talk about men in tight tight tights is Papa Lunchbox. At Papa Lunchbox. Is it at the Papa Lunchbox? Did I just put that in there wrong tonight? It's, it's okay. At, yes, it is at the Papa Lunchbox because there already is a Papa Lunchbox. It's like this Mexican guy who never fucking updates. That's not important because, like you said, we're here to talk about men in tight tight tights mm-hmm. and uh uh those are my favorite kind and also with us uh who wants to ra- talk about uh uh dolls is uh mad mike from po keep c new york rest in peace brodus clay mm-hmm. rest in peace mm-hmm. we're not calling your mother anymore because you got fired mm-hmm. Also with us, immediately shot in the face. our friend from the mainstream media, fresh off of a trip to Orlando. Of course, there was wrestling involved. Uh, Matt Carlins. What's up, Sorg? Happy to be here. I really wanted to wear a black or white tank top to be on your show tonight, but I was told at the last minute there's a dress code, so you will have to settle for this fashionable Pittsburgh Pirates team apparel. There you go. There you go. And of course, you uh, stumbled upon the Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, an eight-year-long running podcast uh, where we uh, talk about wrestling. As I mentioned, you can find us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Thanks to our friend Basic Sickness uh, for that intro music. You can check him out at BasicSickness.com uh, for his free music, new music, music videos, all kinds of fun stuff representing Pittsburgh right there. You can also find this show. Uh, we're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. 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 YouTube, Spreaker, and brand new, you can find us on the iHeartRadio app. That's right. We coming from you. We coming for you, Big Bob and Mikey of the Freak Show. Um, but no, you can check us out on there if you're already on there to uh, listen to your local radio station. Now you got some podcasty stuff. Indie Mayhem Show is on there as well. Uh, so it, uh, we're in good company over there. Uh, you can also drop us a line at our email address at that's right good times uh, uh, good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or the hotline number at 412-206-WMS0 you can find us on Facebook on Google Plus uh, you can find us on Twitter at mayhem show and uh, you can uh, join us in the great Facebook group for the Wrestling Mayhem Show, where a lot of conversation is happening. Um, and you can also, uh, we also do invite you to uh, leave comments, uh, uh, thumbs up, stars, whatever the mechanism may be. Share it with your friends, uh, whatever can let people know about this show. You can join us live at Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Just like the fine people in the chat, ro- chat realm. Like Eamon, like Juggalo John, Brother Sorg, uh, Hot Wheels is in there as well. And, of course, the fine folks joining me on the line tonight. Uh, so, And also, you can support the show. Our bosses, like the Reveling, the Reveling wow, we're doing great tonight. The Wrestling Revolution.net uh, has been a contributor since almost day one. And, of course, Bo Diggity. Woo! 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 <laughs> And so with that, let's let's start the show the only way we know how with a fan mail. We got a lot going on with this. Man, Mike, I think you're going to join me through most of it. Uh, but I'll do the read 
from Dustin. Dear Mayhem and... Uh, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this one. Uh, dear Mayhem Manators. Manators. Manators? No. Mayhem and Manators. Mayhem and Manators. Who has a vibrator? That would be me. Oh. That sounds, that sounds like that. Yeah. We're vibrators. I can move that. Okay, anyways, uh, so we have a new puppy at our home. This is going interesting. Uh, and Whoa. this little shit does enough to draw Wait, out what? anger. Hmm. Is he a hound of justice? Oh. I think we need to know this. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Dustin, Dustin respond next week if he is a hound of justice or not. Hmm. Um, but he goes, he goes on. Uh, the, and, and this little shit does enough to draw out uh, anger from me on a regular basis. Housebreaking is a chore and he really upsets me when he tries to run out in the road. However, at least once a day he does something to make me happy and give me hope. This is a weird... This is not about wrestling. I think he... Did he send us the right show? To be fair, we that, had the same the same instances with Eamon. That's true. That's true. He was adorable. He, actually, hard, went, he was adorable he and hard to housebreak at first. Show, the, uh, the Petling Mayhem show. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, I will remember you. Da, 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 da. No? Mm. Uh, this past Sunday, I felt the same thing with TNA. Oh, it comes around now. As ah. they gave the pay-per-view that was uh, focused on the in-ring product that TNA does well. For all the poor build-up, the strange KO match, and the bad ending to the Bully EC3 match, they had a solid sp- Spot spot fest in the X sorry in the X match, uh, some great heel work by James Storm and the main event that had the entire crowd guessing as to what might happen. Props to them for making my Slammiversary twelve experience a great one. Questions? Sorry that these are all t- TNA themed, but I haven't watched WWE in weeks. Go New Japan. I'm told I should watch this stuff. Somebody has not sent me a playlist of these things. Uh, number one, Mike, this is why you're here to help me. Did any of you catch the pay-per-view? If so, were you happy with the overall wrestling uh, event? Uh, Mike, what, what's your take on this one? Okay, um, I was able to watch the show uh, late sun- late Sunday night. I mm-hmm. live tweeted from the Mayhem account. Um, it was It was a solid show. It was a solid show. It wasn't a show by any means I would tell people to rush out and go see that it was amazing. But if you want to see some solid wrestling, Mm -hmm. some okay stories, and TNA actually improvising quite well, then check out Slammiversary. I watched the first two matches. What would you think? Yeah. This is the most TNA I've watched in quite a long time. Okay. Um, it was okay. I, 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 I watched the X Division match, and when it ended, I went, huh. Well, yeah. I, guess, I guess that's what happens now. Uh, and then I think, I think I watched the Samoa Joe match, and, mm-hmm. uh, and he is just spot on exactly the same Joe as always. No yeah. changes whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, Joe, Joe and Lashley had a good match, though. I, I, yeah. like, heel, I like heel Lashley. Very brutal. And if there was a match in between that, I watched it. But if there wasn't, uh, I did not. I th- I think I think that was I think there was a segment in between that. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a match because that's when an MVP came out with uh with Kenny King and uh, Lashley and told all, told everyone about the main event. Ah, okay. Well, that's all I remember from the pay per view. Okay. 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 Uh, moving on, he's got another question. Um, again, with the enormous following that Austin Aries had, would you have been um, would have been a better decision to have him win the title? Are we, are we, uh, we're talking about the main title. Yeah, the TNA World Title. Uh, okay. Because the main event was Aries, Lashley, and Eric Young in a cage. Okay. Um, I think. I think Eric Young deserves a better run than what he's had so far. Okay. And I think he deserves a longer run simply for his longevity in the company. Aries has already had a title run, and it wasn't really amazing. But I I, I like EY as champ. I like EY 
as a fighting champion and and his story with MVP isn't done yet either. So could you see um, them returning to Aries and Young and maybe having a pretty good series? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, a- Aries and Young I think could have a really good set of matches. Good. Good. Um Excellent. And he says he, he, uh, Dustin says he's a fan of EY and is uh, and he definitely uh, had a following in the arena, but nothing compared to the, how crazy popular Aries was with the live crowd. Yeah. Good, good. They're they're creating stars. You know, <laughs> something's happening there. Uh, number three. While I thought the ending was a letdown, I was very pleased uh, with the EC three win. Uh, who would you have him face next to add name value to the hardcore American idol? He's really calling himself that now. Um, as the undefeatable streak continues. Undefeatable. undefeatable. But um, he's, call- he's calling himself the hardcore American icon because he beat Sting, he hurt Kurt, and now he put Bully through a table. Mm. Um, I also think I think he should just fight Devon next. So he can literally have defeated the entire TNA Hall of Fame. Uh, but, but I, like I, I think, actually kind of like that idea, you know. Yeah, like I, I was, I was tweeting him on Sunday night, calling him the Hall of Fame killer. But um, as far as a next feud for him, I would like to see him go for the world title because there's already tension between MVP and Dixie. And if MVP gets that belt, uh, I think an MVP EC3 match would be really fun. Mm -hmm. Aren't we still supposed to get a Magnus EC3 match at some point? Weren't they working towards that? They kind of stopped doing that. They kind of stopped doing that once Magnus lost, um, like when Magnus lost the belt and fell fell out of favor with Dixieland, he kind of left the whole thing behind. Hmm. So they, they dropped it completely. Like, but as far as another name to add, Hardcore American Icon Champion. I, he says, personally, uh, I'd love to see the uh, them pair him with uh, one of the very few TNA originals they have left. Uh, then he could claim the original, hard, original Hardcore American Icon. There you go. <laughs> uh, that's my time, fellas. I know... My Where's Eamon sign was uh, in my hand during the Willow entrance. We were in the corner to the right of the screen from the hard camera view, uh, but I don't think it was visible. Oh, well, the wife and I had an excellent time either way. Um, I, I also have to uh, make a retraction. I saw the note about hey, about his Where's Eamon sign last night. It, it popped up on my Google Plus during a Raw show last night, so I thought he was at Raw, and... I my geography in my head just completely failed me, and I realized no, he's in Texas. He went to the thing in Dallas. Um, so so apologies for that that mix up last night. Uh, but he does have uh, a few pictures. Uh, my thing is going he's got a whole Google story. So yeah, he, well yeah, he has a whole Google story of them uh, making stuff. Uh, but no, here's here's the where's Amon sign. They're looking for him. They're looking for him. <laughs> you know. There's actually a show. I can't believe there was a show in Austin opposing this. <laughs> I guess I guess Texas is big. Uh, we won Aries, of course, <laughs> and Von Eric equals Texas Pride. I didn't know they were bringing the Von Eric brothers into this. And also, like I said, there's a yeah, Google- uh, the Von the Von Eric thing was a really weird part of the show. But but it, it probably brought a lot of people in. But there's them making the signs and everything. I uh, just don't know if you if you import your pictures into uh, Google Plus, uh, they do. This is a nice thing. I mean, he has a few videos in here too, uh, and it shows uh, how far they traveled and everything. So it's it's kind of cool. And there's all of his pictures from his side of uh, Slam Universe. He was pretty close. Wow, he was like right on the guard rail in the corner there. That's cool. Yeah, T- from what I heard, I mean, TNA had a good crowd there. Yeah, but I heard they had some issues selling tickets. Really. Um, am I like I saw like something they put out like is it a they didn't put anybody on camera side kind of thing like like they seem to typically do? Yeah. Okay. I like we filled half an arena. That's that's usually how it goes. Um, I mean this is it has been the joke lately. They, there's been pictures of them having 200 people at a ball field. I think they sold 3,000 seats though. I thought I remember seeing Tommy that's not Dreamer. Bad. That's not that. bad. But still, there's indies. What Tommy Dreamer talking about? They did 1,500 people. 
you know, yeah, like 2000 at Pro Wrestling Syndicate. Like, like, like this like is like Tommy Dreamer fills the Mid Hudson Civic Center. I don't even think TNA did that. Yeah, exactly. Um, man, there's something wrong there. Um, you know, talking to guys uh, at a you know film interview with AJ Styles, and he's talking about how you know the night that he was up here for IWC in Meadville, Meadville. Um, <laughs> you know they did they did thirteen hundred people. But uh, what, LB, you were there for that, and he's like, he's like, he's like, they're barely clearing five hundred at, at TNA shows. Like that's better than most TNA shows when you when you pull in twelve hundred people for a show like that. You know, um, it's it's just ridiculous, just ridiculous. And I, I don't even know what the number was that was at Super Indie this past weekend for IWC. Um, and I know you know two hundred two hundred is pretty regular for uh, at least RWA and, and a few other ones, and that's that's. DNA is not doing that in a lot of cases. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but I mean, good to see they had something of a showing here. Amen just said, um, Amen in the chat room just said that they filled Inspire Pro Sunday and the pay per view was three hours away. Wow. Wow. Yep. That says something. You know, it, 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 wow. looks like, it looks like Dustin even traveled further than that for DNA. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think it was quite that far from the looks on, the, on this map thing here. Okay. Um, okay. I could be wrong. Um, Eamon, do you have a number from Inspire from the past week? Because I know you guys you guys seem to do some pretty decent numbers. Um, well, I, I thought I was seeing like 600 when we were talking before uh, with some of the guys on the interviews. Um, and we've and actually, if you're interested in that, uh, we do, of course, the Indie Mayhem show, uh, Eamon and I. And we've actually been talking with a lot of the people from uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling specifically. Uh, I think we've talked to each of the three owners um, and so there's a lot of insight about what's going on down there as far as the Texas wrestling scene, if you, you know, if you want to compare it to what's going on with TNA and stuff. And even we had a conversation a long time ago about the, uh, the NWA, um, they're part of it now. And we talked about it, like, we kind of did a, Hey, we kind of bashed on the NWA. Now that you're a part of it, what does it really mean? Cause we really <laughs> pontificated on things before, you know, when we kind of buried it. Um, so it sounds like a pretty good deal. I'd like to see where that goes. Uh, but no, check out Indie Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com if you want to find it. And out Sork, Eamon said they got about uh, 250 to 300. Not, not exact, bad. but not bad. Rough. Not bad. That's good. That's, I mean, that's a that's a solid that's a solid showing for an indie show. That's that's really good. I feel like around the same number for uh, Super Indie this past week too, uh, just from eyeballing it, uh, I guess. Um, with that, first I want to throw a shout out our friends at. Oh wait, what's this? Is this an email? That's an email. Yeah, there's another email that I would like to read because I'm the closest okay. thing to a woman that we got. Okay, and we do have several videos from and, the um, crew. There's also there's also a Twitter update after we read this email. Nice, nice. Uh, th yeah, there's a couple videos that you. Th we'll we'll have a spread here throughout the show. You guys are going to check this out uh, when you download the show later. Um, we got a lot of stuff. I'm I'm getting I'm getting the updates here uh, all all afternoon and evening. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, 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 LB, uh, go ahead and read up in your best uh, in your called, in your best stutter's voice. Oh, I wouldn't want to insult stutters. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm I'm wearing high heels, which makes me about a foot and a half taller. That's as close as I'm going to get to a stutter impression. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, just also mention Hello Kitty. Right. Um, it is hashtag Ladies of Mayhem. Hello, you hot. Oh, so intelligent man. It actually said that. I did not make it up. During our road trip, we encountered a store that sold fire and ice condoms. All the ladies agreed that these sounded terrible and painful. Our question is, which pro wrestling finishing move most sounds like an STD? Our favorites are the Camel Clutch, Crippler Crawl, and Canadian Destroyer. Big fan of the show, Dutter SPS. Only one of us is drunk right now. Hint, my wife. Please send help. Awesome, awesome. Good to hear that uh, uh, they're alive-ish. Um, and like um, I said, at least, at least they were this afternoon when they sent the email. Yes, exactly. And um, well, I, I have an update from um, from Jen Carlin's Twitter feed. Um, she was apparently coming out of the restroom. Roman Wings was standing there, and she got a baby girl. So, um, Matt, yeah. may, you may want to look into a lawyer. I don't know. I mean, you know, she might not be coming back. But what kind of a baby girl? No, like, I, like, I, assume, like I assume that. I, 
I assume he looked like a hey, bang. You knocked up. Is that what happened? No, 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 no. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think you're a father again. I I think um, Roman Reigns looked at her and said, "Hey, baby girl." So I'm assuming she's running away with him. Have Too you ever considered that. having a threesome with a Samoan? <laughs> it's an excellent question. It's an excellent question. And we do have a, a visual update. Of course, Stutters is representing with Property of Mayhem. Uh, out there, and it looks like it looks like they're actually at the show in this picture too. So, and yeah, we'll keep updated on that. Like I said, videos throughout the show here um, as we go. Uh, this oh, is, uh, this they is asked a question too. They, they did ask, ask a question. question. Yes. Um, which move sounds like a set, an STD? Sounds like. I mean, sharpshooter. Oh, that's good. I've got a bad yeah. case of sharpshooter. It burns so bad. What if I'm, you got the? Uh, what if you caught the Texas cloverleaf sword? I'm gonna go with a TNA finisher and say the Botox injection. <laughs> Is there one that's uh, uh, the bad case of the Alabama slam? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell like TKO about that. Oh, um, oh sorry, sorry, <laughs> Jess. Ah! sorry, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have one more email, Sorg. Okay. Go, if you um, want it. From Pierre Calais. Oh, 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 oh. To the WMS Nation. What in the name of Magnum TA did the WWE come up with with this new wrestler named Stardust? Oh. Did, did Creative <laughs> pick a jazz standard, apply it to dashing Cody Rhodes, and put him in a gold dust like costume for this? I'm guessing they no longer want to be crossroads and end up as a weirder tag team. Any reaction to it? Pierre K, a.k.a. Mr. Techwood Drive. <laughs> there he is on Instagram. Uh, if you haven't didn't catch him last night on Raw. I love it. And Mike, I think you agree. Yeah, I'm all about the stardust, especially once they start winning matches. And then at the pay-per-view in July, he turns on Goldust and kicks him in the dick. That's going to be great. I don't know if this is going to be a long thing. I'm okay. I think either way. I, I, sure. Why not? You know, I'm okay with this face. Um, the side note is, you ever watch something, now that you guys have watched WWE Network for a while, and you've watched the kind of programming and the kind of commentary that happens from the guys in these little, you know, uh, uh, VH1 Best Week Ever style interviews that they do now. Um, you ever watch a segment on Raw and say, hey, you know, that's a thing that I'm going to see on Countdown or something like three years from now. <laughs> with, say, with everybody saying, hey, that was a bad idea when we did that. <laughs> Last Sorry, night, this I happened do. a couple of times. Stardust was one of them, even though I do like it, and the other is the puke segment. Oh, the puke oh, segment. Jesus. <laughs> the, the two most interesting things Cody Rhodes has done in his career thus far has involved wearing a clear mask and having a mustache. Yes. And this is more interesting, I think, than both of those. Yeah, I'm all for it. I think it's great. It's definitely the, the it stuff of like nightmares. It seems oh, like yeah. Cody has to like be rebooted, but to reboot him, you have to shift him back to generic wrestler for a few months, and then once he <laughs> you know, once he reestablishes generic wrestler, then you can go straight back to like bat crap insane gimmick form. <laughs> um, he's really good at pulling them It's off. all about extremes with the Rhodes family. I, I, I mean, I love, basically, I love no matter you. what Cody does, he still will never be as weird as his older brother. That's true. That's There's true. There's a high ceiling for. Strange gimmickry in that family. Yep. yep. Even though they'll both compete with the Gold Dust gimmick, and like Cody will bring back Molina, and uh, Gold Dust will go back to wearing the ball gag and cursing. And <laughs> it'll, be a, it'll be a Gold Dust off. I just want Dusty to come out in Gold Dust gear and call himself Sawdust. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no. no. No, that's I'm on board. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> what, what, if, what if Big Dust put on the paint for one night and it turned out he could do the Gold Dust gimmick better than Al, better than all of them? Oh, then what do you do? He's Dusty Rhodes. By definition, he can do any of his son's gimmicks better than he can. Yeah. Better than they can. Yeah. He's Dusty goddamn Rhodes. I mean, let's not kid ourselves here. 
I'm sure it all <laughs> came from somewhere, right? All right, and with that, let's go to our voicemail from Bo Diggity. Woo! It is Bo fucking Diggity. Now, everybody's talking about these fatherhood commercials uh, with Alberto Dorio and Titus O'Neill and Roman Reigns and their kids. And I love them. And as uh, Matt Carlin's main, our friend in the mainstream media and I are the only two people who have uh, offsprings, uh, I feel compelled to talk about this. Now, is it kind of messed up that you have to have commercials to say, like, be a dad? Yeah. But at the same time, the demographic of WWE programming is such that it's purely, not purely, there's a, a, a majority of men watching, and specifically a majority of young men watching. Um, and sometimes guys are stupid and they don't want to be dads. Um, and, and, and as somebody who uh, recently, uh, about a year ago now, came into being a father, it's a... It's a deeply, it's a deep changing thing that some people don't recognize, which is completely insane to me. Uh, the Alberto Del Rio would hit me in the feels, like real strong, because I read to my son every night when he goes to bed. If I'm home, I'm reading, I'm reading him a story to have him go to bed, and it's like that one, like you don't understand the reaction when your kid looks at you, and the really terrible telling of a story is the greatest shit he's ever seen in his life. Like my son hits me with a smile, like. Wow, that was really awesome. And my brain and my heart kind of turn into a puddle, and then I have to clean it. It's the most amazing thing ever. And there are things that you do with your kid that would, that would be so incredibly embarrassing as like a regular person, but because you're doing it for your kid, it is the most normal and hilarious thing ever. Like Roman Reigns doing out a little teapot, that crap happens. That's, that's just things that happen. I make silly faces and make silly dance moves at my son that I wouldn't do normally. I do silly dance moves all the time, but these ones are special. Uh, just because I want him to laugh. I don't want him to be happy. I don't want him to have something to laugh at. Let the WWE have these commercials. They, they, they're supporting and actually they, they're supporting a good cause, which is to have more fathers actually be fathers. Uh, we need more dads in the world. We really do. We need actual dads who are going to be role models and help them actually raise their kids instead of just kind of leaving it up to mom. Um, so if you are a dad and you're being a terrible dad, you probably recognize it. And if you don't, um, step up. Hang out with your kids more. Hang out with your kids more. It's pretty awesome. This has been Bo F. Diggity. The F clearly, clearly is for French fries. <laughs> there you go, Bo Diggity touched on. I think we talked a little bit about those fatherhood commercials last week. Uh, Matt, as a father, uh, you you've probably seen all of them by now, right? Yep, Bo Diggity said it all. Pretty good, Bo. Awesome, awesome. I I just recently saw the Roman Reigns one. Mm-hmm. I is it wrong I want his new theme song to be just him singing I'm a Little Teapot? <laughs> yes, that's wrong. Like, I still think he'd be a huge badass if he came out to that because that's who Rowan Reigns is. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Guys, uh, there's a certain uh, 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 company locally here in Pittsburgh and South Hills that helps us, uh, keeps us in pizza for those that join us here on, on Tuesday nights. Uh, Slice on Broadway. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, in the South Pittsburgh area, please drop by. They're right along the train tracks here in Beachview, uh, just down the road from Mayhem Studios. And maybe you'll visit Mayhem Studios one day. And you said, I'm going to have some pizza. This is the place you need to go. Uh, they're opening a second location. It looks great. Just saw the chairs and everything over on their Facebook page that they're installing over in Carnegie. Uh, PA, uh, also in the south-ish. And so, you know, just off, uh, if you're, you know, you, you don't want to venture all the way into Beachview, uh, but you can uh, hop off the exit, be coming out Pittsburgh through the Parkway West there, and pick up some awesome pizza. Uh, so uh, check them out, SliceOnBroadway.com. Big supporter of the show, and uh, we try to support them back. It's, it's just some of the best stuff we got going. Right, New Yorker? Yes, it is very excellent pizza. I actually just had some pizza tonight that kind of reminded me of Slice's Pizza. 
like legit no joke i ordered from a new place tonight and i'm like oh this kind of tastes like slice on broadway's pizza and it was delicious uh so go check them out slice on broadway.com you have a message from katie duden stop collaborate and listen ice is back with a brand new invention something grabs a hold of me tightly flow like a harpoon daily and nightly will it ever stop yo i don't know turn off the lights and i'll glow to the extreme i rock a mic like a vandal light up a stage and whack the chump like a candle Gen, go rush the speaker that boom i'm killing your brain like a poisonous mushroom deadly when i play a dope melody anything less than the best is a felony love it or leave it you better gain weight you better hit full sight the kid don't play if there was a problem yo i'll solve it check out the hook while my dj revolves it i i bot b so let's get into uh, one discussion we got on tap for tonight. Of course, we uh, have a voicemail. There's a voicemail. Well, we'll get to oh the boy. voicemail after the conversation. Okay. I got an, it's in there. It's marked. We're good. Okay. <laughs> We're good. We have a plan. It's all right. Sorg, we trust. We've been doing this for eight years. We kind of know what we're doing, right? <laughs> sure. Right. Do we really look like a podcast with a plan? Yeah. Matt Carlins. <laughs> What's up? You with the wonderful Orlando, Florida for activities. Um, FLA. <laughs> and ended up at Full Sail University uh, last Thursday for NXT. Completely confused because I thought we were seeing. Did I see? You did not see the same show that we did that night, right? The show you saw on WWE Network last Thursday? Yes. Was not the show I was at. Okay. Confused because of the Yoshitatsu chance, um, and I thought. Well, they, they had those at my show too. Yeah, yeah. So I think they just do it across the board. So super confusing. Yoshi. Not sure what was going on, but still a yeah, great. On the same page. That was a great oh, yeah. episode of NXT. But I want to talk more about your experience. Check out NXT. Yeah. Try not to try not to spoil it, please. I was just about to say that. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, I was just about to say that I don't want to spoil anything. So if you feel like I'm coming up short on details, just pry more information out of me. I actually I, – there's so much to talk about. I, I made notes, so I don't forget to mention it. <laughs> the utmost <laughs> journalist right <laughs> here. Look at how I much fun it. I had. I Look at it. how much fun I had. Oh, my God. It was a blast. Um, in summary, um, I was um, – we were just vacationing down there in uh, Jensen Beach near Point – near uh, Port St. Lucie, and uh, I'm sure, shoot, I mean, it was up in Orlando, it was a two-hour drive away, um, we were like, let's go, um, so we made the two-hour drive to see NXT tape live, four hours of live professional wrestling taped in a, in a sound stage at Full Sail University, and if you have a chance to go, and you are any kind of self-respecting wrestling fan, you need to go to an NXT taping, it was an amazing experience. Um, I'm going to go through my notes. I have bullet points. Um, okay. <laughs> so first thing, um, Full Sail University, um, which, I mean, I don't know about you guys. I never even heard of it before they started taping NXT there. Um, this campus is bananas. It's like just a super, you know, media, you know, movie, TV, radio, everything kind of, uh, campus. Uh, the wife and I parked in kind of the wrong area. Um, but we thought we could get across this footbridge to get to the arena itself. But it turned out we were kind of sealed off by security and security kind of directed us to, to just just loop around the building, just loop around the building. We we're like, OK, there's like one building back there. Well, this security guy actually pointed us back into what Full Sail University has basically a giant movie soundstage on their campus. And it looks like a fake city. OK. And he directed us into the fake city. So the wife and I basically just wander off in there thinking we're going to go around one building. We ended up walking like three city blocks, three fake city blocks <laughs> to get all the way around here back to the other side to get into the arena. I don't want to talk about trying to get into the arena, but we made it. Um, I <laughs> just want to tell you guys um, real quick. There was a dark match with Solomon Crow. Oh, Sammy Callahan um, of uh, IWC yeah. fame. I thought you guys might be interested in that. He wasn't doing – he had no device, no tablet or iPhone with him. I, I guess the hacker gimmick is off. Um, but, you know, he, he looked pretty good. Uh, people were wondering if he might be like the third member of the Shield um, to get called up, which sounds like a good idea. But I think after we saw, 
you know, last night on Raw that probably not. Um, okay, the and everybody knows who Brandy Rhodes is, right? Yep. Yeah. Stardust wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I just have to tell you this because this doesn't come across on NXT, um, but the most over entity in all of NXT is Brandy Rhodes, magnificent Heine. Okay. <laughs> Every time this woman gets into the ring, she's got to do the female get into the ring move where she stoops down to go below the, the bottom in the middle rope. And every time, she, every time she does this, the entire crowd kind of, whoa, you know, as they, as she, as they gaze upon her magnificent hiney, um, which is kind of funny in itself, but it doesn't end there because Brandy Rhodes has a good sense of humor about it, obviously. And she will, like, every once in a while, this happened maybe once or twice during this four-hour taping, she kind of, like, double-clutched her ring entrance. So she's kind of like, oh, 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 okay. So, <laughs> and then, okay, so they get bored after a little while. They start doing it for the referees. It just gets silly after a while. There was a point where um, there was a talking segment, and after it ended, the guys, you know, just left the ring, you know, and, and, and so there are like three microphones left in the ring and Brandy Rhodes has to go into the ring. She has to pick up all three microphones. You can imagine how that went. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yeah. This is the nature of this crowd. They are just, they're wild. Funny. Uh, I got a question. But not too serious. Yeah, go ahead. Did it, did it seem like, um, did you really get the feeling that it was mostly regulars for this? I get the feeling that it's mostly full sale students mm -hmm. who go to these all the time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, they, I don't know, do they have a basketball team? Maybe they do. Uh, I don't think so because it's basically. To go to, it, it's so they basically, just go to this instead. I, like my impression is basically an art, art institute on steroids. Oh, yeah. Like big oh, yeah. time steroids. Oh, yeah. One of yeah. my one of my friends went there. That's a basically crack. how he described it. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, because it's, it's basically like the students are the ones producing the show, you know. They're, they're, I'm uh, sure, right? They're, I well, they're handheld. They're doing that now. They're, they're handheld by WWE guys, but I'm, I think, I think it's the other way around. I think it's, I think now that it's like going on the network and everything, mm -hmm. I think it's, I think they're more being assistants. That's why I've heard. Well, I can see that. I can see that. It, it, to the untrained eye, it's hard to tell. You know, a bunch of people are in WWE t-shirts. A bunch of people are in full sale shirts, and you're trying to pick out who's who. It looked like there were students helping out the actual WWE. Okay, that makes sense. That, I mean, that's, that's still like, like like kind of a they're like, like students wrapping cable. You know. Yeah, even like even them being around it as like apprenticeship kind of stuff. That's still oh, yeah. That's still mm -hmm. important. You know. Could you imagine? Holy. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I get the feeling it's all full sale students, which is cool. They don't seem to take it too seriously. Which is weird, okay? So they're they are extremely knowledgeable of the NXT product, but they don't come off as hardcore wrestling fans. So they're just kind of coming up with clever, jokey stuff all the time. And I mean, for me, I mean, the guys behind me were real boisterous. And they seemed like extremely knowledgeable and had to have been regulars. But and I I was kind of worried at first that maybe they get on my nerves. But they're just they were too funny to get annoying. And, and it just got to the point where you, you kind of end up chatting with people around you. The crowd's amazing. They're, they're just constantly working on stuff. It's just what happens when you take like a couple hundred art students and you just cram them into an arena. <laughs> Stuff's going to get crazy. So well, Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a generally creative group of people, yeah. you know. Yeah, that, 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 that's amazing. Yeah. I think the fact that they all get in the NXT show for free, mm -hmm. it's like something they can go – you know, they can go every couple of weeks when it films and they can watch production happening live in front of them, especially mm -hmm. like WWE has pretty high level production. So it's almost like not a course per se, but like an exhibition. And then I'm aware so, and, and of here's another go ahead. Go ahead. Here's another thing about the crowd. Um, diversity of, of the crowd is, is amazing. Um, just sitting in my section where I was, um, you know, you got you got kids, you got college students, you got you got the the old schoolers, you know, like you and me, um, you've got old people, you've got different ethnicities and nationalities. I'm here in, you know, I'm here in Spanish near me. I'm here in some sort of Asian language near me. People are talking in different languages. So it's like this huge 
melting pot of different ages and, and, and culture and, and yeah, and, and ethnicity and background. And it just kind of all like comes together. It's, and it's got this tons of energy in it um, for just being that small of a crowd. Is there um, is there probably a lot of come in? You think because it is Orlando and a lot of people are there, uh, more touristy as well. Uh, Must be. You think it, like it, I was? I'd imagine it mixes in, right? Because there there has I mean, to be. I mean, something that brings them in on that. Just like people would go to TNA, you know, at Orlando Studios, right? I mean, th- there are wrestling fans all over the world, mm-hmm. and they all know what WWE is. I mean, you don't have to live in America like me. Um, to, to go to get within driving distance of Orlando and be like, dude, we're two hours away from NXT. We got to go. You don't and, have to speak English to, to, to have that thought go through your head. I mean, these are people just like us, you know. And you also don't have to buy admission. To a, in a crowd with them. You also don't have to buy admission to a theme park to go see it. Right. Right. Yeah, buddy. Um, okay, here's – I'm trying to go through my bullet points. Um – there was, there was good. I'm not going to spoil anything. There was good divas action. Um, there was a lot of Bailey and a lot of Sasha, um, uh, Charlotte, Summer Rae. They all did okay. Although, uh, you know, the, the fans got a little bit exhausted. The last divas match didn't go up very well. <laughs> but I, I, I was I'll, also I'll in, I was also informed by your wife that Bailey smells like gummy bears and sweat. Can you confirm or deny this? Oh. From where I was sitting in the stands, Bailey appeared to smell like sweaty wrestling fans, but it might have been clouded by some other things around me. <laughs> oh, I, and uh, I, 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 for those interested on the video, I did find a picture of uh, Mrs. Stardust. I, I don't think my, my I don't think my wife got a picture of her magnificent hiney, and it's a shame. No, that because, is not uh, a flattering. That, that is definitely not a flattering picture of her. Okay. She I'm can do pretty a lot sure better. if you Google. If you Google Miss, Mrs. Stardust Heine, you'll you'll find you'll find some responses. I, we can't go on and on about Mrs. Stardust. I could talk about it all night. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, um, uh, okay, I, I didn't see there was no Corey Graves. Um, I didn't see any. Or, I didn't see any Devin Devinson. He may. I'm he sorry may, to say that uh, Graves may still be injured. Graves has not been on in a while. Yeah, but he's not I think, been on in a long time. I don't know if they're thinking about a call up or what they're doing with him, but I don't, I don't know what's going on. Um, I only saw I only saw Mojo Raleigh one time, Riz, and uh, wow. it was something to see. His one match was quite memorable. That's all I'm saying. Um, um, was he hyped? I, I am not saying anything else. You said no spoilers. All <laughs> wow, I'm that is, is a I saw a great picture single Mojo Raleigh match. And it was very memorable. That is a great Rizzo picture of Tyler Breeze, by the way. May or may not oh, enjoy it. Oh, that is a fantastic selfie of Tyler Breeze. Man, so <laughs> what, can, can, my, can, can my wife take the pictures or what, man? She is unbelievable. Man. She's good, man. All right. Um, there was a debut, okay? Maybe a debut. Have you, have you guys ever hear of a guy named Bull Dempsey? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Has he been on TV yet? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, well, but he's um, like like he's been getting some buzz going into this. I think he's an indie guy. Oh, a lot of people. Oh, he's getting some buzz. Yeah, All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the fans seemed to know who he was because mm-hmm. they were chanting along with this song. But I, tell you, I thought he kind of stunk, guys. He didn't do anything for me. It, he well, seemed like also, the most generic. Also, think about those guys. Those those kids are getting the dark match, so they'll see maybe a Bull Dempsey or a San, or, a, or a Crow. Uh, uh, long before we do, so they've heard the song, you know. Yeah, like, maybe. Like, like you know, Adam Rose, you know, would they was like, wow, they're singing with that the first night he's out. What's up with that? Yeah. They probably saw him the week before. Yeah, yeah um, maybe. Eamon, Eamon from the chat room uh, confirms he's worked in Ascension Jobber Match Squash. Okay. Er- okay, good. Well, he's booked as being from Buffalo, New York. He's billed as being from Buffalo, New York. So I elbowed myself. Elbowed the wife, and I'm like, "Hey, his gimmick should be that he keeps getting title matches, but he loses every single one." Um, <laughs> <laughs> one's for you, Bills Nation. All right. Um, there's a, there's like they seem to be trying to come up with new tag teams. Yeah. Uh, which makes me think it might be Ascension time pretty soon on the main roster. Um, 
who's the big who's the big seven foot guy? Big Cass. Yeah, big Cass. Yeah. Enzo and Enzo Amore, who oh, was like a homeless was bum. How was you Enzo doing? There too? <laughs> Enzo was yeah. back. Enzo Enzo and Big Cass were there doing a tag team. Nice. Okay, that's good. Uh, there was a tag team of Sin Cara and Callisto. Oh man! All the fans go lucha, lucha, lucha. They love that. Yeah, that's the Callisto gimmick. That's yeah. kind of funny that they didn't team him with El Local anymore. That he's with Sin Cara. I didn't see El Local. Sorry to say, I like I, Callisto and Sin Cara. Uh, and Cal- Cal- Callisto, a- Callisto, another IWC, I believe, Super Indie um, um, uh, alumni as Samurai Del Sol. You would have seen him on Excellent. Indies. So. Huh. More than just a rosebud scene. What's that, LB? He still, he's still like the only international IWC champion, right? Uh, I don't think he had a belt. You're thinking Soldier, I think. I am thinking yeah, Soldier, yes. Yes. Um, and there was another tag team. I don't know if this one's made air or not yet, but I've never seen it before. There was a tag team with Aiden English and some other guy. Okay. I think that's been. Has anyone ever heard of that? Oh, I think that's um, actually been building, hasn't it, Mike? Yeah. It's been I, building. Oh, I don't I know if they've it. debuted. He was on one episode in the back. He's a he's a mute strongman, right? Exactly. Yeah, I, I forget. I forget his name. Uh, Eamon freaked out about. Eamon will probably respond in the chat. Eamon's room. probably gonna freak out about this tag team. I'm just gonna spill oh, it. Oh no! As soon as I as soon as I saw the Simon Gotch. Thank you, Eamon. Okay. Um, Gotch, he, really? He's like the mute. He's like the mute strongman gimmick, right? Yeah, with the super mustache. Yeah. Molly fingers mustache. Yeah. Well, they debuted as a tag team. Build as the Vod Villains. <laughs> and, That's and amazing. And they came out to a song that you could probably imagine exactly what it sounds like in your head. And of course, the crowd's like clap, 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 clapping That's along. Dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. Piano oh, heavy. Oh, that's great. Play me out, boys. Yeah, exactly. Oh, um, the I intro can't looks. The intro looks awesome. A, another great NXT entrance. And they, I hope, they do some entertaining stuff. Oh, I hope their ring interest is in sepia tone. I hope it is too. I mean, obviously, I couldn't tell us. <laughs> I was just sitting there live. They didn't like flash our brains and make it go sepia, but I hope it is. Oh, I really. Oh, apparently, Eamon already has a video online because, oh, it's Simon Gotch on the Indies. There and it looks like his stuff is in sepia tone. So I hope, I hope WWE does that. That'd be great. Um, so this show, uh, another thing that was amazing about this show is like I got everything I wanted at NXT. Like I, I left wanting nothing. Um, Adam Rose was there. Adam Rose did a match, so I got to see the the NXT Adam Rose entrance. You know, not <laughs> the original Adam Rose entrance, which was amazing, but like you know the dumbed down version that we get now. But it was still pretty good. Um, uh, Rusev was there. I got to see the medal first. By the okay. way, I, I, I put up this video from the chat if you want to see a little bit of this Simon Gosh. <laughs> it's very sepia tone and old school. Yeah. Definitely. <clears throat> oh my yeah. god, he's got the Iranian clubs. Oh, I was just ah! I was just watching that on uh, network somewhere. Oh, okay. All right. This seems like a much better use for English than what I, I know everyone loved the singing thing, but this is might be pretty amazing. You guys might love it. Um, so I got to see Rusev uh, live with the flag, with the metal, with the metal stand, a little glass case. They put the metal in the glass case, and Lana was there. <sighs> Thumbs up, fellas. She was there. I was in like shouting distance. I could have thrown a cup at her or something. She could get it. All right. Um, oh, now, now that the other big stuff. All right. Let me tell you something. All right. That's a great picture of Lana. All right. Adrian Neville is the champion of NXT. Sami Zayn is the star of the show. Okay. Oh yeah, easy. This dude is to to see him live is to gain a whole new respect. And I I, I could not believe how good Sami Zayn is. We got like at least three matches with. By Sami the way, Zayn. another super indie alumni. <laughs> yeah. Dude's just amazing. Just mm-hmm. totally like drags you right in. Just awesome worker. Um, we also got a healthy dose of Tyson Kidd. All right, this dude, he has found something. I'm, I, I, I know we like people bag on Tyson because they don't think he has any personality. Well, but they are. The they bit are he's doing with the bit he's doing with Natty, 
with him being like the 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 wife the, the husband who's not as good as as his wife, I think they may have found something because the fans were all over his ass the entire night. I mean, like real heat. Like, well, like, you know, they, yeah, like the NXT crowd likes to cheer for everybody. You know, they they like to encourage everyone. They really wanted to be Tyson Kid, and they, they got started, to do it many times. On Thursday, they started chanting Natty's husband at him. So that's right. They that, did that's start chanting great Natty's chant. husband. Natty's husband chant, chant was in full effect the entire night until there was a match about, I want to say, hour three or hour four, but one of the later matches. And then this crowd took his chant to the next level. It was no longer satisfied simply chanting Natty's husband. So Tyson Kidd starts to do some stalling tactics, doing a little Memphis, rolling out of the ring. Um, they start chanting Tyson Chicken at him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 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 And once and once the fans got this into it. their brain, they happily chanted Tyson Chicken at Tyson Kid for most of the night. Um, I also um, Natty was there um, to be in his corner for at least one match, and um, at, at some point, I don't know, I was getting all fired up because it was like the second or third hour, and uh, I was in uh, feeling good about heckling Tyson Kid um, and telling him to, to telling Nat screaming at Natty. Get your husband under control. Control your husband. And eventually, you know, Tyson's standing there. It's a tag match. Tyson's standing there on the apron. And again, it's like, chuck a cup. He's right there. And I just scream out, happy wife, happy life. And Tyson gives me this half head turn. You know? <laughs> and I just, that's my happy moment for the entire evening. <laughs> just to, just to get that. All you want is that little bit of reaction. Just, just let me know you heard me. Okay, you heard me good. Okay, I'm done. Um, okay, okay, last thing. Um, I feel like I should just spill the beans completely on this because I don't think this is ever going to make air, but Batista was there live. Oh, yeah, that won't be on. Batista yeah. was there live. And, I mean, you guys watch NXT, and you know the NXT crowd has been basically banging on Batista mm -hmm. since day one. Better than Batista. Clap, 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 clap. That's like where this thing was born. Um, so Batista, bless his heart, comes out live into the NXT arena and the fans just like, let him have it with just like, and, and he just like eggs them on. He's like, Oh, it's so good to be here, here to support NXT. And I'm happy to be here to support NXT. It's great to see all your fans. And, uh, you know, come on, just let me have it. Just let me have it. What do you got for me? And the fans just go, Batista, champ Batista at him. They chanted better than Batista at Batista. <laughs> Weird. But I think they just wanted to let him know it that got, that was a thing. It got a little meta on them from the sounds of things. <laughs> I think they just wanted to let him know everything that they had come up with well, while he wasn't there. To be fair, <laughs> retired Batista is better than Batista. That's true. That's true. <laughs> retired Batista. Movie star Batista is better than Batista. Like, Batista um, quitting is Two of the best things he's ever done in his wrestling career. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then um, they chanted Blue Tista at him. Um, Dave, of course, was thrilled to hear that. Um, and then, oh, like I said, it's like everything you could possibly ask for at an NXT show you got. Like, um, how could this night get any better? I've seen everything I could possibly want to see. And Batista's in the ring doing this bit and just good night, everybody. And Bo freaking Dallas comes out. Full intro. Mm -hmm. Hot ass pink button down shirt, white pants, looking just goddamn sweet Jimmy Swaggart style, just unbelievable. Comes down and just like, just like works over Batista with with the mic. It's just amazing talking to Batista. You know, you just gotta follow your dreams. If you just do your best, you can do it. So, <laughs> Bo Dallas <laughs> gets into the ring. Bo Dallas is wearing cowboy boots. In one way or another, one of his pants legs, one of his pant legs gets tucked into his cowboy boot. So he looks like he's a drug dealer. He's got one of his pant legs tucked into his boot. And of course, you know, the art students can't let that slide, you know. Fix your pants, fix your pants, fix your pants. And they let him have it. But Alice doesn't fix his pants. He turns around and just like says something along the lines of, This is this is fashion. You wouldn't know anything about it. You know, Batista plays along. He pulled Batista pulls up one of his pant legs and just Oh man, Bo Dallas was like worth a million bucks. Unbelievable. They, they, they it ended as you would suspect. Batista eventually got him with a 
Spinebuster? Yes, yeah, Spinebuster. No Batista bomb. Um, security came to fetch Bo Dallas. And once mm-hmm. again, Bo Dallas escaped from the security and ran off through the backstage. Oh, my God. You got to see Bo running away from the security? <laughs> they had him by oh. all fours. You know, let go of me. Let go of me. And, uh, yeah, again, he escaped security and, and ran off through the crowd. I couldn't believe – no one's ever going to see it. It's, it's sad, and I can't remember everything he said. I could not believe how good Bo Dallas was on the mic, just, like, getting everybody all worked up. Sure the chants are, fans are chanting, Bo, leave, Bo, leave, like that, you know, <laughs> pointing to the exit, Bo, leave, Bo, leave. It's so awesome. It's awesome. Um, I don't know. what You guys have any questions? It was amazing. I can't wait to watch these four episodes. And uh, I've accepted the fact that my fat face is probably going to be all over it, and I'm I'm, I'm right in the line line of sight on like the the, the back corner. What we need to address across from the hard cam. We What's do that? we do need to address um, this picture oh, yeah. of Jen with Batista. What can I say? I mean, Dave, Batista. I know you're watching this podcast because all the wrestlers do. Uh, Dave, after seeing how awesome you are a straight up human being such a pro at this nxt taping um i'd like to apologize to you on behalf of the city of pittsburgh for what you what we did to you at the royal rumble uh because <laughs> you probably didn't deserve that uh sorry dave sorry we jacked up your push um dave dave batista shook every hand in that building after that wow. show was over he went Good all the way around the ring and he was not just like nice to meet you nice to meet you take a picture take a picture he – it was a the most thorough, glad handing and photo op I've ever seen as he just he worked was, his way around the he ring. Was, he was, he went over the guardrail to take pictures with the kids in the wheelchairs. He came all the way around. He didn't miss a single person, Sorg. If he missed a person, I'm sure it was an accident. And obviously he got a picture with my wife too. And, uh, and then I said, get your hands off my wife. And then he said, OK, man, cool. And he walked okay. off. <laughs> if you have a chance to go see the nxt taping live go do it it was awesome i and can't all, wait to and watch not only the that they do they do travel florida at least like they're doing uh, yeah they, armories all through florida they are they're running every armory in the state of florida <laughs> they, so they, they ran they ran a, a video during the show and they were like yeah, they're like Saturday at the Jacksonville Armory, Sunday at the Bradenton Armory, Tuesday at the St. Lucie Armory. Like, every listing every is single, is such and such armory. such and such armory in such and such Florida. It's 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 matching yeah. all the way down the line. Exactly. I was I was like, so is there nothing but armories in Florida? Is is that what's going on here? Um, but but that's is that great. What they call that's arenas awesome. down there. I don't know. Um, and I wonder. Any questions? And you, it was what, awesome. I, I also wonder if they'll they'll start expanding a little bit, or maybe they'll just kind of piggyback NXT on the main roster a little bit for dark matches, I guess. And now we'll actually know who these people are when they do do dark matches. I think they should. I mean, it makes sense for them to take it on the road and make them do like untelevised house shows. I mean, that's part of the learning process for being a professional wrestler is doing that. Sure. You've got to try to somehow create that experience of working these bingo halls you know that's part of what makes these guys who are so great today great because they all worked in those some know how to do that up. some of those guys there yeah. already know how to do it but some are some are built straight from that place so i mean and, and anyone i mean obviously i'm ignorant to what the way the business works but i mean you can't learn to be a professional wrestler just wrestling on a sound stage it doesn't work All right. Uh, with that, you know, hey, let's go to a break here. Uh, let's check out some of the latest from Sorgatron Media. Check it all out. Sorgatronmedia.com slash store. This week, you can watch out for IWC Super Indie 13. Actually, we'll be on digital download by Wednesday this week. DVD soon to follow after that. RWA No Retreat 6 is going to follow up as well. Uh, probably have that there by next week. Also, big announcement. I'll let it out of the bag here. We're going to be carrying the, uh, we talk about a lot on the indie wrestling Andy Mayhem show. Uh, the Vicious Outcast Wrestling is going to be on digital download over at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Uh, very shortly, look for the announcement on the website and your uh, email. Sign up for the newsletter so you know when we release new stuff. 
Um, some of that VOW stuff actually includes a lot of friends of the show, like Facade, Logan Shulo, actually, in a great match uh, last last year. Uh, Gold Dust is on this stuff. Gangrel, uh, Sabu, Devon, who we mentioned earlier. Uh, a really, really cool lineup all across uh, the board for these guys. And I'm really excited to help uh, them kind of get out uh, a little bit. We'll talk about that a little more probably over on the Indie Mayhem show in the coming weeks. Uh, but uh, with that, let's take a look at uh, a little preview, and we'll be right back for Remember When. We are still in Ohio. Well, seeing that's where we're going. To. Yeah. It's <laughs> Although it's been questionable because we've passed all sorts of signs for weird places that are not technically Ohio. Egypt. No. You're missing the karaoke party. You guys are. Fun. I, got, I, I got beaten a rap off. She I'm totally did. Katie completely owned it. Mm -hmm. Whatever. What's White that? girls for life. <laughs> Bam. Welcome back, Mayhemers. Please enjoy those fine products from SorgatronMedia.com. And um, so this is part of the show where we do remember when, and we, we, lost, we lost a lot of good men and one woman this week. And, um, well, right now, I, I feel like it's the most opportune moment to use this remember when to remember your favorite moment from one of the WWE superstars that was just released this week. So... Everyone, let's remember one. Somebody remember, somebody call and remember, somebody call and remember, my mama, my mama, and also the thing that Bobby jerks off to, because Oksana got fired too. Let's remember it. <laughs> Okay, so so no one steals mine this week. <laughs> I'm gonna need that in uh, Sorg, I'm gonna need that MP3 after the show. So it, it is pick on me night tonight. Uh, all right. So anyway, so no one steals mine. I'm going first this week, and I'm going to remember when JTG sold Lita's vibrator to the crowd during her last match. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. With that, uh, uh, Bobby, Bobby, do you want to remember something? I remember a certain day off that a diva had and a photo <laughs> shoot that went along with it. <laughs> and I will say no more. <laughs> she so, got nothing but days off now, Bobby. Yeah. Damn, hey, more photo shoots. They won't I, be didn't, I didn't know they had a referee Mark Harris Diva Day Off. That's interesting. I get a, I, get a, I have an Instagram account. And <laughs> Oh my. Wow. Wow. Okay, what about you, Matt Carlins? Um, I'll go a little bit more recently. It was just a couple pay-per-views ago where we witnessed perhaps the greatest match in professional wrestling history, the WLC match, which featured 3MB, which featured Drew McIntyre. There was a point during the match where Drew McIntyre did full somersault over the top rope, and I thought, hot damn, Drew's coming around, man. He's stepping up his game. Nothing but good things coming. <laughs> nope, not at all. No, 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 no. If I, can, if I can get mine in here, guys, I want to remember uh, it actually for two of them because I remember Teddy Long and the awkwardness that was his relationship with Oksana and the music that would play every time. The sexy. Well, that was Oksana's music. Yeah, that, that was her, uh, like, our hang up. But you didn't see her coming out to the ring to it. And then finally, like she started coming out to the ring and and this happened. So, amazing. little sex in the night. Amazing. Uh, what about uh, what about you there, uh, Wheels? Oh, uh, what do I got? Wow. Let's see. Um. Hmm. 
there's nothing really memorable about any of those people that I can think of. <laughs> I beg to differ. I mean, okay, I'm sorry, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, you don't Bobby remember, I'm sorry. You don't Bobby remember when Evan GTA. Bourne? You don't remember when Evan Bourne got RKO'd from his shooting star press? Shit, yes. Thank you, Mike. That is my remember when. Wow. That, you, Mike. This wow. is why I love my New Yorker brother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you, LB? Um, mine is actually also JTG. Uh, when Crime Time exploded, Shad Gaspar and JTG had their big match at some of that. And uh, I think everybody expected Shad to be the one who needed to get like, a big push and that career afterwards. And JTG out wrestled the fuck out of him. And we were all shocked and amazed that JTG was an amazing wrestler. And that's why he was employed for seven years. Exactly right. <laughs> Is what if making a black guy? What about you, Riz? <laughs> Riz is muted. Oh, the only thing I can say <laughs> is NXT superstar Camacho. <laughs> no. This gimmick was actually kind of cool down there. Yeah, he, he, I actually liked his gimmick and yeah. his matches with uh, with. Uh, Adam Rose were, was actually pretty damn good. Another oh, guy that I was watching and thinking, Todd damn, Camacho's coming around. <laughs> and he's going to come around the 80s in a few. Yeah. I'd be very nervous if I were Tyson Kidd. Wasn't he the son of Haku? Grandson of ha- uh, Sneeze? Really? <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby, no. Bobby. It was either uh, Haku. Or- it was, it was either Haku or the Barbarian. Who was going to somebody's son? I think it was right. Haku. Um, Bobby, no. Before, before wow. we wrap this up, since has everybody gone once? I, I think so. I'd be remiss if we didn't remember Ted, Teddy Long by just saying one more time, six man tag player. Straight up tag team match. I love this, and I don't know. I don't know who. I, I feel like the Joe Dombrowski posted this. Like, how long is it until he gets hired to indie shows just to make tag team matches? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that's probably happening today. <laughs> it needs to be. You're going to wrestle the Undertaker player. I was right. I was right. Macho's father is Haku. Oh, cool. Bless you. Bless you. Didn't know that. Thank you. Yep. And, and the ones we didn't mention, um, Kerr Hawkins and Yoshitatsu. Remember when Kerr Hawkins was, a, was an edgehead? And remember Yoshitatsu? <laughs> Had cool music. Uh, Remember when I came up with the idea well, for Yoshi Tatsu and Santino to be Mario and Yoshi, and they could uh, have Emma as Princess Peach, and they can fight Brodus Clay as Bowser, and they could have a whole Mushroom Kingdom stable, and then they could just drive go karts together. No. That'd be great. <laughs> All right, and with that, uh, you can let us know your Remember When at Mayhem Show or in the comments to this YouTube uh, or over on the Facebook of. Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to do a little bit of an update on what's going on right now. Uh, uh, right after we talk about uh, another way you can support the show at ProWrestlingTees.com. Um, they're doing a lot of cool stuff. Uh, 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 of course, you can check out our stuff. We saw uh, earlier tonight uh, a, a picture. It's going to be on the artwork, of course. Uh, Dutter's sporting our property of Mayhem shirt. Uh, by the great Alex Cars out there in California supporting the show uh, the way he can at Good Times Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com t shirt and of course the logo and of course there's so much more you can get at wrestling pro pro wrestling tees dot com there's stuff for Jr's new podcast that he's got going on uh, you can get Macho Man stuff and you can support a lot of the indie guys out there uh, and hey support some of those guys that just left the WWE for instance I mean, they're gonna have stories on here somebody. very very soon I'm sure. Uh, so go check it out. Support indie wrestling. Support wrestling. Get something very, you know, not a lot of people will have straight from here. There's Bobby Heenan shirts now. Oh, I got to check these out. Bobby Heenan is on here. Um, Heenan School of Broadcast Journalism, Heenan Family. That's great. Monsoon Heenan 2016. I love it. I love it. Go nice. over and check it out. Pro, start at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS and throw some other cool stuff. In the in the cart while you're at it, uh, so I, I, need have, that, I need a shirt that says J Town Family. That's right, J Town Family. <laughs> uh, I did get an uh, update. Of course, you know we've been checking in a little bit all night uh, with the girls out at uh, Columbus live right now as we record this for SmackDown. 
Um, and uh, I got a voicemail from my wife that said, it, of course, it goes straight to voicemail. You should probably text uh, one of the other ones. Uh, I text Katie, and all I got back is, she's a jerk. <laughs> so okay. I, sounds like things are going great. Sounds like things are going amazing out there. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, so with that, uh, we want to touch on a couple quick things here. Uh, um, uh, first of all, apparently the, the fans are deciding what's happening with TNA's ring mic. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> TNA had a press release this week um, that said they're going to be transitioning to a new ring when TNA has their tapings in New York City at the end of this month. And apparently fans can vote online or they can tweet if they want this ring to be a six-sided ring or a four-sided ring. And I'm pretty sure TNA is trying to stack the votes for six-sided because Ethan Carter the third has been tweeting all day that he does not want to wrestle in a six-sided ring. <laughs> Hashtag problematic bubble. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Now, if they vote, if we, if the fans vote for a six-sided ring, is it one step forward or two steps back? Uh, one step forward. Mm -hmm. But um, here, here are here are tweets that Rockstar Spud has sent out about this very issue. Um, at Ethan Carr, six sides is trending, sir. Please answer your phone and let me know you're okay. Don't do anything stupid. I'm doing what I can. Vote hashtag four sides. Because if not, Ethan Carter is going to have a fit of rage, and his wounds on his chest will open up, and I'll have to clean them. Ugh. Whoa. Ugh. Whoa. And that that shows why Rockstar Spud and Ethan Carter are continuously the best things the on DNA. Yes. Yes. The only reason is the ground. Well, there's a couple of Jay-Z, for instance. Um, wow. So well, I, I know I voted, so I voted for six side, of course, because... That's what I remember. Of Everybody's gonna vote six sides. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> when when they got rid of the four of the six side ring, the first chant was "We want six sides." Yep. Mm -hmm. And they've already brought now, it back. Since, Go ahead. Since since the four sided ring came in when Hogan came in, is that like will, will that mark the the end of the the Hogan stamp on on TNA and they'll be able to let go of that? Like like is this is is it still a stain? For the TNA fans, um, they have to look at this four-sided ring. We so. need the we need the older brother from Wonder Years to stop asking people questions backstage. That's the last remnants. That's, that's the last of it. Wow. I, I also voted for six sides, and I don't know why I did it. I don't understand <laughs> what changes if they switch to six sides. It's something different. I mean, it, it it was it was the thing that made them stick out. You know. Um, I think I think they finally realized that they can't resell a six-sided ring. They've got to use it. <laughs> it's been sitting here the whole time, well, right? Still cage. Shop <laughs> dot TNA only has one left. <laughs> uh, they had, they, they had, just can't get rid of it. They had to buy one off of high high spots like everybody else. <laughs> wow. Um, they try cutting the four sides into a hexagon, but it just doesn't work. <laughs> I'd like to wonder, like, what a good third option would be for this poll, like an octagon. I, I, I don't like this a ring, just once, maybe. Hashtag <laughs> AJ All. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag AJ All. Yes. Wow. Um, wow. Anything else we need to touch on before we get out of here this week? Uh, sword. I tried to boycott Kevin Hart on Raw. Yeah, that was that didn't work out too well. Yeah. Um, but one thing I did notice, he had to enter the ring like a diva. He's a tiny little man. Yes, are, he are, you, are you discriminating against small people? Nope, I'm just pointing out a fact. Um, because I, cause I'm, I'm just going to say, I'm sore... Everybody else knows how tall I am. <laughs> I would probably go through the bottom rope as well. Riz, it's, Riz, it's okay. I'd go through the bottom rope also. You guys know oh, me. Yeah. I, I jump in the ring like Sinkara. <laughs> <laughs> no trampoline needed. <laughs> I was going to say. Oh, no, Bobby, we know what you do. 
Uh, from a a man in the chat says, uh, yeah, you know, uh, because at least the ring looks different because it uh, doesn't matter if it makes it harder for the guys to wrestle. Hey, you know what? I don't care if it makes it harder for the guys to wrestle. I don't care. Half that roster is the same roster they had when they started. Those That's motherfuckers true. know how to wrestle in six sides. Is, is it really ring? any more difficult to wrestle in a six-sided ring? You guys know what they should do? What the you guys remember American Gladiators? Yes. Breakthrough and Conquer. That's what the TNA needs to become. Just straight up Breakthrough and Conquer. <laughs> <laughs> First they run the football course. Then they mean so, that little circle. So, Bobby, Bobby, your ideal TNA, the is, ramp is the breakthrough part. Breakthrough and conquer. And, and then there's a circular area for the conquer. Yep. Wow. Damn right. Okay. I All would right. watch TNA if they would do that. But no, but see, then they'd and have then, to bring back Hulk Hogan to host it. And then fight in, uh, little, uh, fight in little cage spheres. Th- that would be the ultimate X-Men. Oh, my God. I want to see. I want to see Rockstar Spud in Atlasphere. I want to see Rockstar Spud in Atlasphere. Well, we that, all that, want things. Yeah. What did we learn? Yeah, what did we learn? Guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, Bobby? I learned I'm going to miss Oksana. <laughs> and Vince really likes projectile vomit. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. What about you, Terrible. Riz? I learned that if Legends House um, taught me anything... It's never go to a steakhouse with a lot of old people. Oh, Riz, I, thought, <laughs> I thought you were going to say something that made me have a spit take again. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, but seriously, that that last steakhouse scene with with uh, with uh, Pat Patterson coming out, uh, with Hacksaw telling the story of, of his... I don't know. Was it his daughter or no? It was his, his uh, girlfriend. Girlfriend. girlfriend? Huh? Yeah, his girlfriend. Uh, Gino Glenn needing a kidney for, ki- kidney from his wife. Oh God, the feels. Mm-hmm. That was really good. Feeling. Though. It was a good yeah, episode. And then and then this week they just yell at each other. <laughs> I want them to get along. Because why not? <laughs> That's why. Uh, what about you, Mike? I learned that uh, if you're going to have a pay-per-view in Texas and you're going to promote a Texas death match, you should not present me with a last man standing match because that is what TNA did because they don't know the rules of wrestling. A te- a basically, a Texas death match is there has to be a pin or submission first, and then if that person can't answer a 10 count, then the Walker, match is over. Walker, what, Texas Ranger, comes out and kicks him in the face. Exactly. <laughs> what TNA did was just a last man standing match. Spin kick style. Walker told me I have AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Hey, I used to get this. What about you, Wheels? Uh, what did I learn? This is kind of funny. It kind of goes off with Mike said. I learned that June is the month of last man standing matches. Because I think, if I remember correctly, WWE had one. Then, this past Saturday, RWA had one. And now, like you said, Mike, TNA just had a last man standing match. So, I learned that, hey, June is the month of last man standing. Awesome. Uh, How about you there, Matt Carlins? I learned that if you hang around near the food trucks parked outside the NXT arena, you might just run into a real-life rosebud. Hmm. It's true. LB? That hamburger when getting the hamburger. Not the hamburger. <laughs> I, hope was, I hope he wasn't getting lemonade. <laughs> LB? Uh, I, I learned that uh, uh, Jeff Hardy has really turned a corner on being bonkers. Because I hadn't actually seen Willow in action until Sunday. <laughs> and I think that she thinks that we don't know it's him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best description of Willow I've ever heard. 
<laughs> Jordan, I think it's everybody, right? Uh, I learned. Um, Jeez, where do I go with this? I learned that you can do big stunts at a uh, indie show. Uh, I learned that uh, when you do such a thing, um, you should really report to the status of that the person is not dead uh, throughout the night because they will keep asking about it. Um, yeah. The so man will fall from a 20 foot high perch the entire seemingly night. Seemingly nothing but a platform. And you just carry on with the show after the first uncomfortable let's go to intermission. <laughs> you wow. Should, you should probably say John McChesney has reported to the local hospital and um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so. Yeah, don't, don't, don't let people stand there going, well, are they going to tell us what happened to him? Just pull a Tyler Breeze and say, John McChesney has entered the hospital. <laughs> there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Join us, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, video, audio forms, of course. Hit the email address. WrestlingMayhemShow.com, of course. And you can drop us a line there in the 412-206-WMS04, uh, the hotline. Uh, please tell your friends about us at Mayhem Show on the Twitter's Facebook group. Uh, as well as a regular Facebook, as well as Gmail. No, Gmail. Yes. Um, <laughs> Google Plus. That's the thing. Uh, I'm Sorgatron. For the whole crew, the mayhem all around. Thank you, guys. Always oh, a great, Yay. fun night. Thanks, Matt, for telling us about your uh, NXT report. And uh, check him out. Thanks for having me. Check out Mainstream Matt on Twitter as well. Good stuff there. Retweeted by one Paul Heyman. He's a Heyman, He's a Heyman tweeter. Uh, one time. We'll see you guys next time. Check out the Indie Mayhem show. Mayhem out. Stardust. Columbus, Ohio. We're here. All right, and with that, let's go to our voicemail from Bo Diggity. Woo! It is Bo fucking Diggity. Now, everybody's talking about these fatherhood commercials uh, with Alberto Del Rio and Titus O'Neil and Roman Reigns and their kids. And I love them. And as uh, Matt Carlin's main, our friend in the mainstream media, and I are the only two people who have uh, offsprings, uh, I feel compelled to talk about this. Now, is it kind of messed up that we have to have commercials to say, like, be a dad? Yeah. But at the same time, the demographic of WWE programming is such that it's purely, not purely, there's a, a, a majority of men watching, and specifically a majority of young men watching. Um, and sometimes guys are stupid, and they don't want to be dads. Um, is somebody who uh, recently, uh, about a year ago now, came into being a father. It's a it's a deeply it's a deep changing thing that some people don't recognize, which is completely insane to me. Um, the Alberto Del Rio would hit me in the feels like real strong because I read to my son every night when he goes to bed. If I'm home, I'm reading I'm reading him a story to have him go to bed, and it's like that one. Like, you don't understand the reaction when your kid looks at you and the really terrible telling of a story is the greatest shit he's ever seen in his life. Like, my son hits me with a smile like, wow, that was really awesome. And my brain and my heart kind of turn into a puddle and then I have to clean it. It's the most amazing thing ever. And there are things that you do with your kid that we that would be so incredibly embarrassing as like a regular person, but because you're doing it for your kid, it is the most normal and hilarious thing ever. Like Roman Reigns doing I'm a little teapot, that crap happens. That's that's just things that happen. I'd make silly faces and make silly dance moves at my son, but I wouldn't do normally. I do silly dance moves all the time. But these ones are special. Uh, just because I want him to laugh. I don't want him to be happy. I want him to have something to laugh at. Let the WWE have this.
these commercials. They, 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 they're supporting it actually, they, it's supporting a good cause, which is to have more fathers actually be fathers. Um, and we need more dads in the world, we really do. We need actual dads who are going to be role models and help them actually raise their kids instead of just kind of leaving it up to mom. Um, so if you are a dad and you're being a terrible dad, you probably recognize it. And if you don't, um, step up. Hang out with your kids more. Hang out with your kids more. It's pretty awesome. This has been Bo F. Diggity. The F clearly, clearly is for French fries. You're fucking <laughs> There you go, Bo Diggity touched on. I think we talked a little bit about those fatherhood commercials last week. Uh, Matt, as a father, uh, you you've probably seen all of them by now, right? Yep, Bo Diggity said it all. Pretty good, Bo. Awesome, awesome. I I just recently saw the Roman Reigns one. Mm-hmm. I is it wrong? I want his new theme song to be just him singing "I'm a Little Teapot." <laughs> Yes, that's wrong. Like, I still think he'd be a huge badass if he came out to that, because that's who Rowan Reigns is. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Awesome. Okay. 